Hi, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, this video is a companion video for an earlier one that I did uh, showing you how to uh, create and use your own JSON data inside your web app or inside your website. Uh, if you watch that video, you can see that we've got a similar uh, setup here with our three items. Uh, that we're bringing in from this JSON data. Uh, so what I've done is I've, I can't really do this uh, as well if I'm using code pen, so there's no uh, pen for this. But you can see how to do it in your code editor. Um, I'm using Atom as a code editor. And I've, I've essentially just recreated uh, what I had in code pen by exporting the files and bringing them in here. I still use uh, I still use Pug <laughs> in my normal setup, so I've got my normal build system set up here and, and everything is functioning uh, like I want it to. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take this data right here and we're going to put it into a file that we're going to call uh, books.json and then we're going to go and make a call in our get data function that's going to go to that file pull in the data just like we would from any sort of uh, third-party uh, server using an, an API that they've set up except we're just gonna go right next door to a file that's already in our tree structure here <clears throat> so let's go ahead and, and make the file so we're gonna put it in uh, let's put it in the views folder I have to do this for pug's sake and I'm gonna call it data.json Actually, what do I call it? Books. Books.json. And what I want to do is I want to take just uh, not the variable. I don't need the variable for this. I just need the object. So I'm going to take the object that's inside the variable and I'm going to put it here in this JSON file. Now, because it's a, a .json file and I've saved it that way, it sort of gives you this uh, Christmassy green and red. Uh, key value pairs um, look to it uh, which is great because it helps you to quickly distinguish uh, what are the keys and what are the values uh, now I haven't removed it from my functions page so it's still showing up over here uh, but when we click on books.json we have all of our JSON data and this is what we're going to link to inside of our app so for right now I'm just going to comment this out so that we don't have it functioning anymore <clears throat> and it should also whenever I save it's gonna reload and that should be nothing over there that's what we want so in our get data we need to run some sort of a uh, a call like we did with our API uh, in J or jQuery we write it like this we say get JSON I think get JSON will work. If not, we'll we'll try just get. And then <clears throat> instead of putting in um, uh, a web address right here, which is what we would normally do if we're going outside to get the API and bring it back into our app, we're just going to simply do books.json. Now, if this is in a, a subfolder called data, it will be data slash books.json. So just you have to be mindful of whatever your structure is. But since this is in the root, it's right here. Then we're going to be able to just sort of pull that in. Um, for my purposes, I'm actually going to have to, to copy and put that in here. Um, because my build system is not going to automatically copy over books.json. And it's serving this website through this build folder. So I have to do a little bit extra there. Um, so when we when we connect here, we're, then we're going to run a function, and that function is going to go in here. And what we want it to do is uh, we want to say data, and let's just make sure that we connected right. So console.log data, and we'll see if we're able to connect to our data structure. Okay. Uh, we are, and this stuff here is going to sort of get us in trouble here. So let's do that again. And you can see we've connected, right? 
So this is our object, just like it was in the other video. Um, whenever we said, uh, when we console log data in the other video, we got this object that was inside of the data variable, right? So now we're going and we're getting the JSON from this, this file, and we're running this function and it's returning uh, data and then we're just console logging that data. So this is very similar to what we were doing before when it was inside of our own uh, .js file. Uh, only now we're pulling it in uh, as a separate file so just like we would go and we would pull in uh, the main.css into our our website through a link uh, in the header or app.js we are pulling in our data uh, from an external file this allows us to do a lot of things uh, as far as modularization so if you don't want to do books in one JSON file and you want to do some other data uh, whatever in another one and you can sort of keep those things separated and your call is so uh, short you're not doing a new HTTP request so it's not costing um, it's not necessarily costing the user data in that way uh, because you're not making a request and having to do all that uh, so it's it's a very convenient thing and then we can not console log this but once we get the data then we can do something with it and we can use our uh, the parts of our function that we had done before and we can just set those in here like this and we'll see if this goes and functions well like it should so it should be running through once we get our data it should then go to the book list and through each book list we get all these and then we output this to the grid um, I gone on to the index page and put grid on there so just to make sure that we have a place for it all to go but you can see that we get it uh, the same as whenever we had our JSON inside of our functions.js which in my setup turns into app.js right? so it turns into that and it would normally be there but it's not so we're instead we're pulling it from this books.json and then when you come in here you can add you know it's really easy to add just another book and you can just add it on like that and then when you come in <clears throat> there should be a fourth book here which will be the same as the third book let's see we're gonna do it Oh, they were just waiting. Hmm. Yeah, it's not working for that way. Uh, but theoretically, you should be able to add a new, uh, another book in there. Let's see. Maybe it needs to be hard refreshed. So for each of the books, it should be pulling them into our data stream but it's not yeah that's weird uh, I see this is uh, oh gosh okay what's happening is this has to be all copied over <laughs> into the new into this new uh, into the build folder so we have to go to this books.json and then when we save that that should work it should be four I just have it set up where this doesn't easily um, uh, JSON just isn't being pulled into my my build system so now we have those two so this is the new one that we added and then you know as you come out um, it just sort of gets added to your grid and if you added another one or another one uh, they would just sort of be added to your grid and then you could control uh, layout you can control anything that you wanted to because it's just data that's being added into your HTML page <clears throat> alright uh, I hope this has been informative this is like I said just sort of the very back side of um, the other video that I did so if you have any questions about this one or the previous video, uh, just leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think. 
and um, is there something a way that I could do it better or um, is the suit your needs um, uh, if you like the video click the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to the channel and um, get notifications of new videos when they're posted and uh, as always have a great day and thanks for watching I'll see you next time